<laughs> you literally did that as I pressed record. So it might have, it might have got it. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the Sunday party. <laughs> Welcome to the Sunday episode of Blunders and Bodwellians, the Wounded Witch edition, guys. This is episode thirty-five of the Sunday party. Let there be fire, um, which pretty much sums up the Adventuring Associates. Really, um, they have an official title, Adventuring Associates. That does not mean that they are official in any capacity or that they do things anything other than let's put people in sacks and set fire to things. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it sucks. <laughs> That's, to be fair, your sack um, plan ratio is currently at 100% success rate. So, yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, when we left you guys off, you guys had a bit of a discussion um, which had ended in Kess stropping off, which I think is the best use of the word stropping. Um, Kess had stropped off, and you guys, the rest of you had headed off over towards a very exciting looking human sized, well, technically they're all gnomes in Amley, so gnome sized, but you could all fit in it as well, catapult, um, which is pointing across a big lake in the middle of um, in the middle of the city which is the capital, Regal. And uh, yeah, there's a big festival going on. They're all very excited. So there's lots of different games. Um, and yeah, Gareth, where did the dog go? I'm very confused. He's not here now. He can't tell us. <laughs> we will ask again later. He's just gone away to get dog. That's all we heard. It but may take him weeks. It, it may take him months. You know, <laughs> it was a, a very justified dropping off. <laughs> yes. I, I, like, I like how he had the time to go get the dog. And then, as soon as we start recording, went to get the dog. <laughs> you know what? I'm just wondering where the dog went. <laughs> where did the dog go? We've been curious. He didn't go anywhere. He was downstairs and I was just like, I was sitting upstairs without him. And you were talking to Troy and I was just like, I want to get my dog. So I went. Ah, okay. That's kind of sweet. Okay. So you can't fault my logic though. <laughs> see he's not arguing so therefore we can't follow the logic um so um yeah uh the argument that Cass says was completely stro- completely stroppy completely <laughs> completely justified justified you call it an argument justified stropping um Belgrath um well here we go here we go um I will I will read out what occurred I've got that um you guys summoned a nope <laughs> that was it Indy summoned a nope on the steps of the um, the little temple where you tried to go and get Indy helped, but through a series of shenanigans, you guys messed it up a little bit, and the cleric refused to help you because uh, Indy did bad silly things. Um, and then you guys all came out, and then Belgarath uh, started talking to well, it says he talked. He said it says he talked to Caspian, but then he talked to Kess. And, um, did I turn the nope into a rabbit? You did turn the nope into a rabbit. Yes, you did. <laughs> and it's just going to stay there for a really long time. Um, so that's a thing now. Um, they decide to have a go and have a chat. Belgrath um, teaches Kess the difference between being against the party and against you. Um, Errol Very shows them... Attention. Yes. Errol shows them all rocky. Um, which is his new pet rock. <laughs> her, sorry, Ariel's now a girl with a beautiful dress. Her new pet rock. Um, and Cass stormed off in a huff and transformed into a human. So Cass is disguised as a human currently. And Cass, the last thing you heard was a familiar voice saying something on the lines of, well, hello, Cass. Um, so I am going to start with that, which is um, Cass you recognise the voice as that of uh, Sir Jalin. He's appearing to you sort of suddenly through the crowd in the way that you've seen him do before. He just sort of, he doesn't seem to materialise. He just sort of seems to walk in as if he'd been there the whole time. Um, almost as if he'd been walking in step with you. He comes out of the crowd next to you and just walks alongside. And his voice is the same as the last time you spoke to him, but he does look a little different. He resembles... L- the more you look at him, the more the sort of dragony scale facade shifts and he becomes more like a very dark-skinned red and black tiefling. 
But he's raising his eyebrow at you. And he's talking. You know it's him. And he's talking in the same voice. Well, a long time no see. Are you here to... That, that mean... Are you here to tell me news about our pal? Well, I mean, I was, but then I noticed you were being a little bit silly, so I had to interject. Kess. Kess. What are you doing? You have a problem with what I'm doing. Which part exactly? If, if you don't mind, why? Well, the, uh... The main body of the problem right now is currently stated in you walking away from those fine fellas over there. And he points towards the uh, rest of your party who are hovering by the <laughs> human-sized catapult waiting to have a go. Fine fellas, you call them. They are entirely unreliable. Useless. Look, I already have the item. I should go back now. <laughs> They clearly don't want me on their little part. So why should I care for them? I have oh. everything I need. No one's asking you to care for them, Kess. Just stick it out. Ride the road. Everything's a lot safer in numbers, you know. And uh, they have sworn allegiance. In varying degrees, albeit. But they accepted gifts. Oh, <laughs> they accepted gifts, he shouts over the incombodied voice of Velgra. <laughs> <laughs> they accepted gifts from Our Lady Erfel. They can use her blessing. Did they, though? They, uh... You did! You got the gloves, you bastard! I remember throwing those away. Yes, he doesn't know that, though. <laughs> Look. Some of them may be somewhat trustworthy. But there are definitely some that I would not trust as far as I could throw them. Which is not very far. Well, you don't need to trust them either. You don't need to care. You don't need to trust. Just uh, think of them as cannon fodder. Bait, if you will. And a small ring of protection around you. You're not the strong, brave fighter they'll send to the front clad in armour. They'll run ahead of you, protect you even, take some of the hits and some of the blows when you can't and would rather be doing other things. I would not trust them to do that, but maybe maybe if I had some useful gift Erfel to aid me in convincing them. Ah, are you angling for a present for yourself or for your party? <laughs> well, as you know, my greatest aim is to to serve Erfel well, right? So I think that the party is currently not aligning with her will. Then if you can aid me in, in better alignment, then surely my will is the same as You've got better with your words since I last spoke to you. Well done. Clever. Do you want me to, to, to roll um, a persuasion? <laughs> Go for it. Roll persuasion against the Cambion. Do it. <laughs> Cambion? Out of character knowledge. Didn't need to know that. <laughs> <laughs> Tiefling. <coughs> Tiefling. Dragonborn. Mysterious thing. <laughs> I mean, it can be honest from Empire, isn't it? Or... Uh, in D&D, &D, they are... I'm not going into that. I'm not going into that. <laughs> but yeah. Oh, you're not, you're not telling me what they are. That's mean. They are... Um... All right, all right. While you're rolling, I will read to you. I will read to you from the Dungeon Master's book. Ooh, okay. Which, okay. which now, now I'm I will read to you from my DM's book, which has all his notes. 
Where is it gone? Right. So, first do I... So I, I rolled a 19 total. Okay, noted. Cambion, there we go. A cambion is the offspring of a fiend, usually a succubus or incubus, and a humanoid, oh. usually human. Cambions inherit aspects of both parents, but their human, but their horns, leathery wings, and tails are hallmarks of their otherworldly patronage. Born to be bad, cambions grow into ruthless adults whose wickedness and perversion horrifies even the most devoted mortal parent. Even as a youth, a cambion identifies its rightful place as an overlord of mortals. It might orchestrate uprising in towns and cities, gathering gangs of humanoids and lesser devils to serve it. Aww, that's cute. Not quite what he was going for, but sure. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Kess, I'm cute. <laughs> I I imagined I imagined you wouldn't say that in character, don't worry. I don't think Kess has ever said the word cute unless it was uh, before it, so Okay. He raises his eyebrow at you again and you can see his tail twitch. And he flashes you a smile with pointed, slightly yellowed teeth. Alright. How about a deal, Kes. Hmm? You return. You return to your party. Continue to persuade them, if you can, about Our Lady Earthfell. If they will not be persuaded, they can just be cannon fodder later down the line. But you do this. And I shall go and speak to Our Lady and see if she can't... Uh, Bring out something more persuasive. Hmm? This does sound very good to me. Very helpful of you. It's good that I can rely on Actually, I've been wondering. Hmm? So we have this shard, and Erfa wants... Mm. Everyone wants it destroyed, is that right? That is her ultimate goal. She is as yet unsure how that might be possible. So for now, she just wants it back. She would just like it in her possession, so she knows it is not in the wrong hands. Should I then send it back with you instead of going Oh, I'm afraid you cannot send it back with me, Kes. And he, like, pokes his finger right through the middle of your nose and out the back of your head. I'm <laughs> just... I'm just an illusion. Right. We trust you to safeguard it. Bring it back to Travis for us. Well, yes, of course, and you should. So I, will, I will do my very best. <laughs> Haven't I always? So, we have a deal then? Indeed, a deal. Um, Actually, there's something that has been bothering me. Bothering you? No, that's not a sentence I ever thought I'd hear you say. Hmm. Go on then, what is it? What has uh, got the infinitely grumpy Kess so forlorn? It's not exactly a comment. Wow. I remember you certain news to be. I don't know if you recall. Certain news? I tell a lot of people a lot of things, Cass. Yes, about an explosion. I believe it was an explosion. Oh! The explosion in the Whispering Martians? Yeah. And why does this vex you so? 
I would like to know a bit more about the circumstances. If, if you don't. The circumstances? Well, I mean, I wasn't there myself. That's a lie. You were there. I was there for the aftermath. I saw the culprits sneaking away. Most of them. So you know who did it? I know their name. Sorry, Kess, you dropped out there for a sec. Can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Okay. Then, will you tell me their names? Oh, I only know the name that their group goes by. Once you hear a name like that, it's uh, not easily forgotten. And although I disapprove of what they were doing, I must say I approve very wholeheartedly of the name they chose. They call themselves Carnal Eclipse. Gosh, if I had my own group, I think I'd go for a name like that. Quirky, don't you think? Huh. Find it disgusting. That's why. Um, any idea why they chose to destroy? They, like so many other, as you would put it, imbeciles, are acting... On orders. Orders from the wrong people. Orders from the wrong people? Is that what you said? Orders from the wrong people. Although, personally, I don't think you could class angels as people. Right, so it was some sort of angel who ordered it. You are aware of the name of the group we associate with, Kiss? The no wings. No wings so named because the angels have done us wrong in the past and will continue to do so. Their holy crusade of what is right and what is good order must come to an end. We all know this. For the sake of the world. For the sake of people who don't want to lose their family like you. They're all evil creatures. Any names of these angels? Or any angel? <laughs> oh, any and every angel is just as terrible as the next. Unless they've fallen, of course. Then they, uh, they tend to be one of ours. So no idea how, how I can find who it is. Follow the trail of destruction and devastation. You know, I hear wherever Carnal Eclipse go, they leave death and despair in their wake. We hear stories. Once you get back to Trevis, you should ask around. Lots of the people they've wronged are um, sitting in our encampment in the capital. Hmm. I will surely do. And you have no idea why they did it? Apart from orders. They have been hoodwinked. Hoodwinked, tricked and deceived into believing they are doing something oh so pure and good for the world. But you and I both know, Kess. That is no real feat. But I don't understand. I don't understand. Why did the angels want to destroy the marsh? Now that even I don't know. I can look into it for you, if you like. I would be interested. Thank you for the information. That's what I do. I know things. And I find out things. I'll be your dog's body for a while. I'll go and see what I can find out. You will, of course, have to uh, remain with this party of riffraff and... Keep an eye on Indy. She's going to be very interesting. Hmm. If she turns, Kess, oh, what a weapon that would be. 
I always wanted a pet. Uh, I always wanted a what pet. What do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean if she turned? Ha! Huh. You've all found out what armor she's wearing. Oh, right. <laughs> yes, that would be amusing. I'll, uh, I'll ask around about your marshes for you and go collar shopping for Indy. <sighs> Might get her a oh. leash. <laughs> Enjoy that. I will certainly keep an eye on her and uh, you wouldn't want your pet to lose her head, would you? Oh no, can't be having a headless pet, that'll be terrible. <laughs> you will keep an eye on her for me, won't you, Kess? Well, indeed, we help each other out. We do. Alright, I'd better go get on with things. This illusion will only last so long. Shuffle along, back to your renegades, I suppose. Oh, they're adorable. Look at them. So happy and excited. Don't you just love it? Such a bunch of idiots. <laughs> well, Indy and some idiots. Maybe. Uh, very well. I will we'll meet you later. I will return as soon as I have news and something to sweeten the deal. Indeed. And he, he just sort of twirls his finger like, turn around. As in like, turn around, walk back, go on. Yeah, okay, 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 um, in her human disguise, you you guys recognise it. She walks up. Hmm? Oh, I think we lost her. Hello. Hello. I, I, I think we were just waiting for you guys. <laughs> you were not seeing anything. Sorry, it went. It all went red on my end, so I just waited for a sec for it to go green again. I'm still yellow. No, I'm green again. Hello. So yeah, Cass has walked back over to you guys. Um, you can talk to her or not. Entirely up to you. Um, but you guys have got the catapulting thing that you were going to try and look at. Um, there is also because you did ask me before. Um, so there's the human catapult across the lake. Um, and there is like some guys playing like betting games with like golden cups and chalices that they move around and stuff. And there's also Titan Grip, which is another game as well. <laughs> I mean, the catapult sounds. Um, I think you cut out. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I said the catapult thing sounded fun. Okay. So, <laughs> you guys... Uh, so, Belgraf is heading to the catapult? Yeah. Love it. Awesome. Um, so, Belgraf, you rock on up. Um, it's uh, made by gnomes, so it's gnome-sized. So, they can sort of fit in and sit very nicely. For you to sit in it, you'll have to sort of scrunch up a little bit but you can fit it'll be all right you're not a massive man uh, nope sorry you can read that's fine i can hear you again um so yeah um you guys can go in um he says right first goes free to uh make sure you can hack it and uh if you get injured i am not liable for anything after that you've got to pay it's two silver a pop you with me Yep, sounds fair to me. Alrighty, lad. Strap on in. And the trebuchet catapult is, like, wound back down. Uh, 
and I do have a picture of the catapult somewhere. There it is. So I've just put it on the just put it on the video. So I'm going to put it up for you guys as well because I found this oh. beautiful picture of a catapult that made me happy. So I'm going to put it on. There it is. Is it the giant trebuchets that they build? <laughs> it's um human catapult. <laughs> There oh. it is. <laughs> it looks a bit like a deck chair. So this one's more, um, it's more like a big ice cream spoon. And it sort of gets wound back and then, um, so yeah, so Belgarath, uh, me lovely. So, um, could you, <laughs> all right, so you're going to get wound back and wound back and wound back. Um, so I'm going to need you to do a strength check. To hold on to the catapult and then to do an acrobatics for your landing. Oh, good. Hold <laughs> he sounds like that's something he's really, really good at and enthused to do. Okay, strength check came up uh, 20. Uh, Okay, so you managed to hang on until the last second. And the other one was acrobatics, she said. Oh, good, it's my favourite uh, stat deck. Okay, for that I got a 13. What did you roll for your strength? Because I didn't think your character was it. I rolled, um, I, I rolled a 19 and I've got a plus uh, one strength modifier, so I've got a not natural. Belgraph managed to hang on. Well, you, you're quite light, so you don't have to be sure you can So you hang on to the sort of like edge of the curved spoon basin as you sit in it, and you suddenly realise that when it gets, when it starts to fling you, um, you realise that it is quite high up. You are um, higher than a lot of these houses. Now, they are gnome houses, but they're not tiny. They've got quite large doors because they do have human ambassadors and people who walk around. So they are, you are quite high in the air and you see the lake stretching out before you and the crowds of gnomes and cheering people Wah! all around. And suddenly in the pit of your stomach, you just go, Oh God. But you managed to hang on nonetheless until the very bitter end when it twang sends you flying off shing, over the lake. And as you start your descent into the water, um, what was your um, acrobatics? 13. 13. Okay, cool. Um, so you try to remember everything you've ever been taught about landing in water. Was it bent knees? Was it straight legs? I can't remember. Do you flap your arms? Do you cannonball? Um, and what would you like to do? Would you like to try and straight leg it, cannonball it? What would you like to do? Belly flop. <laughs> oh, and that, anything between a one and a seven would be a belly flop. <laughs> <laughs> but you can choose to belly flop, of course, if you'd like. I was just looking for a gift that doesn't appear to exist. <laughs> Is there no gifts of human catapulting? No, I was uh, looking for a um, a bit from Flushed Away. Oh, 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 I do know what you mean. Keep your legs straight. When you hit the water, <laughs> I kept my legs straight, boss. <laughs> so, yeah, basically, would you like to keep your legs straight? Burger? How would you know what? Scrap that. How in the many variants how would you like to enter the water bell graph? We've established unless you decide to, you are not going to belly flop because you rolled okay. So yeah, how would you like to enter the water? I mean, belly if I flop, can, I guess heels, for, heels first, pencil dive. Okay. I'll get me legs straight, Spike. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, you make um, a sort of pencil shape and you go into the water and you make a very respectable swoosh. <laughs> Um, it doesn't splash very wide, but it does splash up sort of twice as high as you. You sort of get the water to go just above you. You hear a lot of, ah, from the bank. And um, a lot of the gnomes are sort of clapping. Um, and there's a little paddle boat with two gnomes in it. And they sort of row over to you because the lake is quite deep. Can you swim, Belgarath? I guess we'll find out. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, I'm, I don't know, to be honest. I don't, I don't think I ever decided that. Um, I'm going to say <laughs> dog, I, I can, I can dog paddle. <laughs> do, I can do a respectable doggy paddle. 
<laughs> All right. Um, Very dignified. Doggy dignified doggy, doggy paddle. <laughs> <laughs> so the d- dignified doggy paddle keeping your perm out of the water like an old lady splashing yes yes lovely yes but i do not have a perm how dare you <laughs> sorry I'm not gonna... um so yeah the rowboat comes towards you and two gnomes lean in and go all right and they sort of give you an arm each and they haul you into the boat ah and they sort of pat you on the shoulders and um a bit like in the tribe as a tournament they sort of spin the boat around and they point towards a panel of judges who are gnomes on the opposite side of the bank, um, and they are judging everybody for their attempts. And it's oh, it's, <laughs> your scores! And you have a look, and um, they all hold up various different scores, but overall you get a 7 out of 10. I can live with that. <laughs> cool. All right, so Bargraf, you get paddled back to the bank. Um, would anyone else like to try, <laughs> try the human catapult? <laughs> or Bargraf, you can go around again if you like. Hell, I'll go again if no one else wants it. All right. Yeah, we... I, don't, I don't think Kest is going to. Uh, <laughs> oh, please. I'd love to see Kest in a trebuchet. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. So if you're... Familiar, I'll just go if you want to go again. I was about to say, Riss is pregnant. And I was like, no, wait. That's the other one. <laughs> Although, to be fair, <laughs> that is very in canon. Arissa, like, steps up and reads a, sim- a sign that says, if you are under this height or pregnant or breastfeeding or have heart palpitations, you can't go on this. And something suddenly makes her go, oh, yeah. And she turns away. Wait, what? No, I can't go on. <laughs> she just stands there for, like, a good five minutes, just staring at the sign, like, what? What? Huh? No one under a certain height or pregnant in another version of themselves may go. <laughs> <laughs> if someone who is pregnant in another version of this narrative <laughs> tries to get on this right. Uh, but yeah, uh, Belgraph, if you want to go again, it'll be two silver. It'd be Hammett, sorry. Two silver. Yep, yeah, all right, I'll go again. Cool, all righty. Um, the guy says, all right, you can have one go for two silver, two for four, or three for five. I'll just take the one go. All right, your loss. And he uh, takes the two silver off you, pockets it. Right, get up in there then, go on. Dripping wet, you uh, make yourself comfortable in the trebuchet. And it is pulled back. <laughs> ground, it's ground, ground. Trebuchet, it's a catapult. Sorry, the catapult. <laughs> Swam back. Um, and then when you're ready, and hey, presto! You are. Flung once again in the familiar notion. Uh, so do me a strength check to hang on to the catapult and then do an acrobatics for your landing. Oh dear. Right. Okay. So strength. Oh dear. Three. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. And your um, acrobatics. <laughs> Acrobatics somewhat better at 18. You will flop acrobatically. <laughs> All right. Um, Belgraf, you think you've got this this time. You get in the catapult and you I nearly said trebuchet, but I didn't. I didn't. You sit in the catapult and it's wound back. And you're like, yeah, yeah, I've got this. I've got this. I've got this. Yeah, it's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. And then it gets twanged. Like, ah! And then suddenly you realise that you are dripping wet and it makes holding on to the bowl a bit slipperier. And you're like, Whoa, oh, oh, God. Ah! And just before you reach the very top and it pings you out, uh, you start to slip down um, like the ice cream starting to melt out of the scoop. And you slide down and you start skidding out of it feet first. <laughs> going across the lake. <laughs> Um, and was it an 18 for your acrobatics? Yes. Okay. Uh, you managed to save it. Um, as you are flung out feet first and the crowd starts going, Ooh, and oh no. And people start laughing and the judges preemptively start holding up ones and twos. Um, you, you, you realize I can save this. Uh, the water coming up steadily before you, you twist in midair and you put your fingers down to the ground and you end up diving in like a dolphin head first. You don't make a very massive splash, but you do get a resounding, ah! and they all start clapping to you. The little kids are jumping up and down going, cool, can I go, can I go? And their parents are like, no. <laughs> um, uh, once again, you come up spewing water into the air <clears throat> and uh, the rowboat, they paddle back over you to like, respectable. And they like haul you out of the water. We thought you were a goner then. 
And um, as they start pointing, you realise that um, there are some rocks in this lake, um, just jutted about here and there. And had you continued on your current trajectory, you may well have managed to smack into them butt first. Yep, I think that's me done. <laughs> um, they do swivel you around, they go, oh, my dear, my dear, and they offer you like a little towel to wrap around your shoulders and they clap you on the back. Scores! Um, a couple of them had preemptively been holding up ones and twos, which they have hastily put back down again, having seen your excellent landing. Um, you now come up with a very, very respectable 8.75 out of 10. Yep, that'll do. I'm, I'm cool with that. <laughs> All right, so you get paddled back to the bank. Um, does anyone else want to try the catapult? Yeah, I don't, don't look at me. I, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you sit and have a watch while lots of other people try the catapult and various things. Um, Indy standing somewhere near you, looking very grumpy about the world. Um, Enna just looking at anything fluffy. I'm going to assume around her. Jiggly, jiggly right next to her. Um, you have got... Um, you've got guys playing around next to you with like um, different cups in a game that Arissa knows to be called the King's Vault. And you've also got people playing a game called uh, the Titan's Grip. You can play either of these games if you like, or you can go for a wander or do extra things you'd like to do. Belgraf, I'm assuming you let Caspian dismount from your shoulder before you did the trebuchet catapult? Yes, I did. Okay, cool. Noted. Well, you asked afterwards, and he didn't specify. <laughs> well, I would also point out that if he didn't want to come on, he's a dragon who can fly, so I would <laughs> imagine he could take his own initiative on that one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he may be small, but he ain't dumb. <laughs> he doesn't like getting wet either, so he probably won't have come. Um, so, Aww. yeah. <laughs> I don't like the water. It makes my toes go funny. Um, says Caspian while he's sitting on the side watching with Jiggly and Enna. Um, so yeah, did you guys want to go and see any of the other games that are going on? And did you have any other business you'd like to do in town? Um, so so Cass wanted to go and have a hunt for soul. Because she feels like she, she, need, she needs to get this hunted soul. And she, she's been making good on that. Mm-hmm. How many souls are you at currently, Kess? You're in my other notebook. Uh, I don't think it's what's on the PV. Ah, she's at 71 souls currently. 71. That's 71 out of the 100, right? Yes. Cool. So she, she would like to complete the set before she does. <laughs> that's cool. Um, I had you on 52, so that's cool. That's all right. That's from my old notebook, so that makes sense. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. Well, uh, then I have two questions. Uh, one, is there anything anyone else would like to do? And two, Kess, in a city full of jovial, festival-going, happy and very <laughs> alive gnomes... Where exactly would you like to start looking for souls? <laughs> well, <laughs> that sounds like a girl with a plan. <laughs> Every settlement has a cemetery, right? So the first place to check is there, isn't it? Okay, cool. So Kess is going off in search of a cemetery. What a jovial afternoon was had by all. Um, uh, so, did you guys... Oh, it's such a <laughs> thing to do. Did you guys want to follow Kess or did you want to go and do something else? Something non-disturbing. <laughs> I don't know what's disturbing about a cemetery. I don't know what you're on about. <laughs> oh, well, collecting the salt. <laughs> um, so, yeah. You, 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 you two, would you like to um, wander about on your own business or follow Cass? Although I have gone red, so you might not be able to hear me. Am I back? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. I can Sorry, hear Discord went red and I couldn't hear anything. 
But yeah, so yeah, um, uh, I, I nearly said Ariel. He's not here. Arista and Belgrath, me lovelies. Did you want to follow Cass on her crazy mission or did you want to go do your own things? Um, I, I'm just, I'm ready to crack on with the wedding. So uh, there's nothing really I'll, I'd need or want to do before that point. Cool. Alrighty then, uh, Cass. Um, you go hunting around. It's not hard to find a cemetery. Like, it takes some wandering, but most of the gnomes are jovially at the festival grounds and doing all the games. So the streets are quite empty, and all you need to do is look for a decent-sized temple, and you've seen a few of them already. Yeah. And so, yeah, um, you find the largest of the cemeteries. Um, so how would you like to go about looking for souls? Uh, well, I think if, if there are currently any souls, it, uh, I should be able to sense, right? Mm-hmm. Based on ability. Cool, so just a general sort of wander about, have a feel of the place, and have a see, yeah? Yeah. Cool. Alrighty. Um, so, then, Kess, just do me a perception check with advantage. It's a 14. All right. Okay, 14. Then you... You find eight souls, Kess, that for one reason or another have not managed to move on. They are haunting the cemetery. Um, some of them sit. Um, you can't quite see them, but you can sort of feel a sense of where they are. They're very, they're very faded, but they haven't managed to move on yet. A lot of them sit on their own gravestones. Um, some of them are just wandering. Some of them stand very still and motionless, and it's very. They're very easy to collect. They don't take a great deal of like harnessing or ghost bustering. They are just very. They're all gnomes as well, so you're like collecting souls of people like half your height. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, souls are souls. Uh, yeah. 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 Oh, that's very nice. And I, I'm, I'm thinking, like, Urfeld's book must have some useful things about how to acquire souls of people. So maybe Cass will have a little read. Joby will have a little read about how she could rip souls out of people. <laughs> um, <laughs> sure, have a look through your book. Uh, do you me a... Do an investigation check, why not? Uh, okay, so, so that, that's a 10 only. Okay. You find a lot of information about souls and reaping of souls. There is some mention of splitting a soul from its body, but it's a very not spoken about subject in this book, particularly as this book oh. belongs particularly as it belongs to Urfel. <coughs> oh, Kess! <laughs> Kess, do me... Ooh. Not an intelligence check. <laughs> no, 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 no. Do... Might be another... Do me another investigation with an advantage, because it's a, it's a, it's a Fell's book, so you this would catch your eye if you see it. Oh, yeah. Okay, I got a 16. Okay. That's not bad. Considering I have a minus one on investigation. <laughs> okay. Intelligence based. Okay. Uh, Cass. Um, you find a very interesting note that has been scrawled in red ink in the middle of the book 
where it talks about souls and it makes passing reference to how some can rip souls from the body. Um, there is a note and it says, any attempting this in the service of Urfell will be obliterated. Oh. Well, that's right. Okay. Cool. So uh, it, it, it's better than normal way of murdering people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Mur mur it says absolutely nothing about murder, but taking a soul from a living body, not cool. <laughs> Got it, I can kill, I just have to kill them. And body. you guys thought she was the bad guy, honestly. Sorry. <laughs> yes, yes I did, all along. But she's saying that you shouldn't do this, and this is, so this is good, says the DM quietly. <laughs> <laughs> see, see, Urfell is a very good god. Yeah. Very, very, very good strictures. Make sure all of your followers. Nobody. Sorry? I said fooling nobody. <laughs> okay, um. Right, uh, so I, I guess Cass might wait until nightfall to reap more souls in the traditional way, because it'll probably be easier. <laughs> Alrighty, um, so in which case, I will skip you all forwards to the wedding of Arissa, <laughs> Arissa's brother and his um beloved prince. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, Arissa, did you have anything you wanted to do or say to either of them before the actual ceremony takes place? There's no problem. You don't have to. It was just if there was anything you wanted to, let me know. Don't do it. I've always loved <laughs> She probably would have spent some time with them. Um like each separately mm -hmm. beforehand mm -hmm. especially her brother just be like I can't believe you didn't fucking tell me <laughs> you know I mean? I'm, I'm, she's I'm still slightly mad. I'm really 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 sorry <laughs> sis like really really sorry um uh, I can't really say anything that will uh I mean you know how it is you don't know how it is um I mean, I wasn't even sure what I was thinking. Oh, what? <laughs> he meant because she's not a god. Never mind. <laughs> what? <laughs> I was thinking, well, you know how it is, except you don't because you've never been with him long. <laughs> <laughs> what he meant was. What he meant was, you know how it is. Oh, no, wait, you don't because. um. He's coming at it from a, you know, a man who discovered he was gay, point of view. Which Arissa, <laughs> sadly, cannot do, much as I'm sure she would, willingly. Um, and, yeah, he, he, he apologised to you a bit, and he's just like, I mean, I, mean, I, I was, uh, was kind of worried what mum and dad would, would say. Uh, and, I, I mean, you know... Um, I'm really sorry, sis. She's just looking at him with this face that's just like, just I'm, I'm just so done. <laughs> he's got a just like throughout this entire thing, she's just like, in for fuck's sake. He's got a proper face, like sort of like proper. I'm embarrassed and I'm uncomfortable and I am really sorry. Um, how can I make this up to like, you? She'll like fiddle with his collar, straightening it, and just go. Just make him happy. Hey. Don't make a dirty joke. Oh. Don't don't make a dirty joke. I don't make a dirty joke. He just says to himself over and over again. Then don't. She, then she grins and winks at him. <laughs> I love you, sis, but that's really disturbing. What? I can give you a few tips, you know. 
la 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 not listening not listening la 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 um that's my baby sister baby sister okay okay back in the room and he sort of clicks the finger not thinking about that nope 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 you know sis it was really weird. We had a ship come back, and a bunch of people had been uh, out exploring, and they swore they saw some girl who looked just like you, and they were going to go and say hi, um, but like then they realized it wasn't you, because she was pregnant. It was really weird. <laughs> she just well, looks at him pregnant. Like... <laughs> she just looks at him like, oh, where? Um... I don't know, they said somewhere in, oh man, Risha, I think. Yeah, yeah, there's somewhere in Risha, and they said she had like the same crazy hair, um, and she looked all adventury, and like, they, they swear it was you, but who knows? Ha! Maybe you've got a double. <laughs> and he's like laughing. That'd be stupid. No, I've never been to Risha. No, I hoped if you'd been, you'd have sent me a postcard or something. Well, I did pass through that one time, like, ages ago, but not recently. And I'm definitely not pregnant. Yeah, good. Good, because you're my baby sister. And I I'm guessing you're not dating anyone in this group that you're with oh God, no. now? No. No. no, 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 no. Good. Um, well, good. But, I mean, you, you, you should be happy, but good, because none of them are good enough for you, obviously. Um... <laughs> But yeah, I mean, I was thinking, like, if you were... Excuse you and your entire race. <laughs> <laughs> you mean humans. Precisely. <laughs> I can imagine Belgrave, like, popping his head through the door as well, and then Riss is just like, excuse you, I'm trying to have a moment. Yeah, trying and failing, because I'm here now. <laughs> I'm really glad you're not dating that guy. Yeah, me too. Hey, well, fuck the Perry. Maybe later. I'm actually getting married, but thank you for the offer, Hanson. Don't try and flatter me that you literally just said you're glad you weren't. She wasn't dating me. What? I'm dating, not even here. Dating doesn't even mean anything about sex, Belgarans. Touche. I don't know why you're even arguing me with me because I'm not actually here. Maybe I have low standards, Belgarath, who is not here. But um, yeah, well, no, so it's just like if if you were, then clearly the guy is an idiot because he's not here, which means that I would have to go and kill him, and that would put a dampener on the honeymoon, to be honest. But um, yeah, I'm glad, and I hope that one day um. When it happens for you, you'll um, let me know. Because, yeah. Yeah, I'll give you a lot more warning than you gave me. I am going to pay for this for a while, aren't I? Yeah, just a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Do you promise not to carpet bomb us on the honeymoon? No promises. <sighs> I love you. And he like pulls you in and gives you like a knuckle sandwich on his face, just <laughs> in your hair. In your hair. <laughs> he just pokes him in the side. Oh, you have sharp nails. Oh, <laughs> that's you never learned. You never learned. I'm gonna be bruised. And he's like looking at his like, like I'm gonna there's gonna there's gonna be a mark. Oh, oh I'm sure I'll sink and kiss it better later. He like goes bright red in the face. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. God, he's so pretty. Oh my yeah. god, I can't get over how pretty he is. I know, right? Oh, oh. It hurts me, sis. It hurts. It hurts me how pretty I he is. Felt? How do you think I felt when we were younger? Yeah, but you talked about it like all the time. I just had to nod and agree. I couldn't say anything. And I was sat there the whole time, like, yep. He's so damn pretty. But now you can talk to me about it now. I can. Trying to gloss over the fact that it's kind of weird. We're <laughs> we're gonna make we're gonna move through this. We're gonna make it past it. It's still gonna be weird because it's us. It's gonna be fine. Of course, it's gonna be weird. It's it's us. 
Yeah. We're, we're, we're a random human family living with a bunch of gnomes. We're always going to be weird. We were always going to be weird. God. All right. Well, um, cool. Let's, um, let's go get me married to a prince. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Belgarath, you don't need to sulk. It's fine. <laughs> I think he's pouting. Probably. I can practically hear it over Discord. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, so um, you head on down. It's a huge, huge temple building. Massive. It's built out the back of the big sort of the mansion palace where the royal family live. And it goes off around the side. And it is huge and tall. It's almost as tall as the palace itself. It's got huge marble archways, huge windows of stained glass depicting all sorts of scenes of like um, water and mountains and sun and snow and cliff tops. It's all beautiful. And the dappled light comes through. It's lit with thousands and thousands of floating candles and they're all in different shades of blue and yellow. So the lighting is really cool and icy, but pretty. And um, as you walk in, there's like music playing. There's a band. Well, there's not just a band. It's a freaking orchestra, man. There's like an orchestra in one corner and there's like a, a choir of what looks like um, gnomes from one of the schools. And they're all kids like singing. <laughs> That hurt. Um, but they're all there. Imagine that fine where there's those four choir boys and they're going, ah. and then one of them gets that giant balloon with he. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, the ceremony hasn't started yet. Um, the prince is going to arrive second. Uh, essentially, in this scenario, the prince is the bride um, because he is the most special of all special things um, because he is. <laughs> He is the prince. Um, so, yeah. So they're, they're, they're keeping the helium balloon until him. <laughs> um, well, I was I was, I was, was going to say that the helium balloon could come out now because there's no one there. So, <laughs> so they could be all just be messing around completely. <laughs> and I'm just like... Oh! <laughs> I'm still talking on this! Fuck! I can't stop! Help! I can't stop! Oh, it's worn off. <laughs> Um, so yeah, there are shenanigans of plenty as you go on in through into the cathedral. Um, everyone stands up when you and your brother walk in. You trot on down the aisle. I say trot. I love the word trot. You walk delicately and serenely down the aisle. Um, he asks you to give him away because um, it's such an unusual wedding and you've been such a tremendous part of everything and he feels so bad. Um, and so the parents are just sat at the front. So you can walk him down and come and stand at the front. Um and he's got like, he hasn't got a bunch of flowers. He's got a single white rose that he's holding um, as he walks down and he's wearing a beautiful sort of silvery blue robe with um, beautiful shoes and his hair's all shiny and uh, it's looking pretty dapper. He is your brother, so don't hit on him, but he is, he's looking very <laughs> nice. She can still compliment him. She can compliment. <laughs> Yeah, so he, he um, sort of, oh, lots of nervous twitching, standing at the front. Oh, okay. Oh, how do I look? Sis, do I look okay? You look, you look great. Okay, cool. Right, shh, I can't. Mm, mm, uh, okay, cool, 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 cool. It's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. He gets another light slap on the head. Mm, thank you. I needed that. Okay, cool, right. Ah, oh, always coming. Oh, and the uh, the doors to the massive main entrance are opened, and uh, the prince walks in. He has an entourage of um, gnomes. Some of them are children. They must be like other members of the royal family, distant relations and cousins and things. Um, and they're holding. Essentially, he's got a train. He's wearing um, again long silvery blue robes with a deep gold sash because he's the prince, and he's wearing his crown um, and his hair's all wavy and he's just beautiful. Oh, I think there's a picture I can put up. Actually. Prince Arson. There he is, looking fine. 
Um, I will put it up for you guys as well in a sec. Um, I can imagine as soon as he comes in, both Arissa and Rika just kind of go... <sighs> <laughs> they just have the exact same reaction. Yeah, just, oh damn. Oh, <laughs> oh, he's a bit... He's a bit all right. <laughs> and um, and he is. He is a very... Oh, yeah, woman. He's a very, very beautiful gnome. Um, he is a little taller than a lot of the other gnomes, so he stands a little higher, but he is um, he's still still gnome height. There he is, looking beautiful with his wavy golden hair, looking all beautiful. Um, and he sweeps majestically up the aisle. And yeah, he's got a big, long cloak on, and it's silver embroidered with beads of gold and blue, a bit like the Amley flag, and it trains out behind him for, I am not shitting you, like 70 feet. This thing goes on. It is long. And he's just like swaggering very slowly up the aisle, like, yeah, I know. I know. And uh, he also is holding... <laughs> Belgrath. <laughs> Belgrath, you're uninvited. Like, Belgrath, you can sit, you're sitting at the front with the rest of the party, um, looking varying degrees of annoyed. Um, and yeah, he sweeps past. He is also holding a white rose. And uh, they come together at the front. And it's all very lovely. And um, there's a look just between the two, the two men. And it's just, oh. You know, no matter how much you've been hurt by this experience, it just touches you a little because it's just absolute joy to see each other. And they both hand you their roses so you can hold their white roses and uh, they shake hands and do their ceremony. And there's a ceremonial hand binding um, with a long strip of golden cord and it's magically entwined around them and then it breaks and turns into two rings, which they both then put on each other. They make their promises in front of everybody. There's a lot of ooing and ahhing. Your mother, Arissa, breaks down in tears, happy tears, but you can just hear a, oh, my baby boy! <laughs> <laughs> and um, the prince's um, little sister is sat there as well and she's in a very pretty dress and she was helping to carry his train and she's looking very excited and she's swinging her legs and she waves at you occasionally Arissa and she's just beaming all over her face and she's clapping all the time and uh, then they finish their speech and everything and they are pronounced married and they they kiss a little bit longer than everyone was anticipating like there's cheering and clapping Arissa gets a confetti cannon (laughs) Uh, as Quislings always does (laughs) Gosh. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> uh, I mean, oh, hey, Kess, when did you get here? <laughs> well, uh, is Kess supposed to be there? Or, or you're in, she... you're invited. You're a member of the party. Your zombie is not invited. Your zombie will have to stay outside. No, Kess shouldn't be there. If her zombie is outside. <laughs> Kess just waits awkwardly outside with her zombie looking grumpy. No, she's probably preparing to re... Okay. People that are drunk, they are easy to trick. Okay. <laughs> okay, so Cass is looking grumpy, but not that. Um, they finish the ceremony, and everybody claps and applause. The kiss goes on for a very, very, very long time, and the clapping just sort of has to be... And... Nope, we're still going. Yep. And they keep clapping. Yay! It's so pretty and sweet, and I think they're using tongue. Okay, yep, yeah, just carry on. Yep, yeah, okay. And they're done. Okay, cool. And they finally break apart. Just kind of nudges them, just like, come on, guys. <laughs> guys, guys, time for that later. Time for that later. Hmm? Hmm? Oh, okay. Like a like a plunger being drawn out of a drain. <laughs> um, <laughs> they break apart. So sexy. <laughs> yeah, lipstick smudged all over both their mouths because they're pretty boys, they're going to wear some makeup um, and yeah they uh, they lead a procession out of the temple uh, um, Arissa, you and uh, the prince's sister, you are invited to trot along at the front with your families and the prince is well, your brother is technically now a prince so the prince is now lead you through and you go to a huge banqueting hall that's in the palace and uh, Kesh, you're invited to this bit as well. You know where it's going to be, so you can always join in later if you like. Um, and 
There is music and dancing, songs and a huge amount of food laid out on huge buffet tables that runs down one end of the room, which is literally about 200 feet long. And it's just a huge table full of all the different foods you could possibly imagine and drink. Looking at the buffet tables and kind of just gives a really deep sigh. He's thinking of that. Aww. Like he would have loved this. <laughs> and uh, so yeah, there is uh, the the princes go and take their first dance. They twirl around, um, and then when everyone starts joining in the second dance, they break away. And while the prince dances with his sister, um, Arissa, your brother, sort of beckons you over, like, dance, sis. Always. And as he spins you and pulls you in really tight, he just whispers in your ear, like, really frantically, I'm fucking married! I'm I'm a grown-up! I'm a grown-up! I've got to help run a country! Shit! Well, the king and queen are still still ruling. You've got time to learn. Uh Uh-huh! Uh-huh! He's busy laughing at his panic. Yes. Um, don't get me wrong, I'm really happy. I just, I need to stop my voice from being this high and squeaky. Have you had any of those healing billings by any chance? No! <laughs> She's just laughing now. Just dance with me until it goes away, okay? Okay, okay. <laughs> Okay. All right. So, um, is there anything anyone would like to get up to during the wedding before we cut back to um the grumpiness of angst that is Kess? Just that Arisa would probably do a dance competition. Okay. Noted. Which she would definitely drag Belgrath into. All right. Belgrath, you are dragged. What? You are, you, are, you <laughs> accurate response for Belgrath. <laughs> not paying attention. No, yeah, I, was just... I was just like, why am I being dragged in? You are. Like, Come on, this is a party. You're going to dance. So she just kind of goes over to where he is and drags him into it. Alrighty. Um, so, um, Arissa and Belgraph, could you do me um, performance checks? Oh, crap. <laughs> performance is based in charisma. You're, you're in trouble. I just gotta find get my character sheet. Oh, so, so Belgraph is actually a good dancer. Probably. Oh, Belgrath, go you with your 23. So, yes, I am rather good. <laughs> but what did you roll, though? That's uh, not 13. all that matters. No, yeah, 13. <laughs> I rolled an 8. Oh! What's that? Re- <laughs> fire? Plus 16. She, she got the blessing, remember? Oh, right, yeah. And she didn't split. She put it all, because you put it all in one. So she decided to out-bard everyone else. <laughs> yes, anyone listening? Our game is broken. I don't care. Bard got a bard. Bard got a bard. And you know what? Broken D&D is more fun anyway. So, we're carrying on now. Oh, all right, so, Belgraph, you are pulled in, and... In your moment of, oh, for fuck's sake, you then think, you know what, screw this, I'm going to do it. And you get in, and you're doing it, and you're popping the moves. I don't know whether you're going to be doing any kind of dancing in particular. Um, at the moment, I'm sort of imagining that sort of Applejack, My Little Pony dance. Um, but you can pick whatever dance move you'd like to be doing. What <laughs> Applejack, My Little Pony dance? You know where it's like, the like where they've got like the hats on, and they're doing like the barn dance thing, and they're all like stepping? No. Do you mean line dancing? Yes, 
Except it's more fun when it's to do with My Little Pony. Okay. But yeah, what sort of dance would you like to be doing, Belgraph? Because you're doing very well at it. What kind of music is playing at the moment? Well, would that affect your decision, Belgraph, or would you just do it anyway? Yes. Okay. At the moment, it's... Um... I ain't going to waltz if it's an upbeat thing, and I'm also not going to do the hokey pokey. If <laughs> the pony the pokey! Day. That was it, the pony pokey. Um, it's... <laughs> It's fairly upbeat at the moment. It's sort of like um like swing and jazz. It's not quite like um I mean you could you could macarena to it, but it's not quite like, you know, really fast pace, but it's it's much faster than waltz. Okay, we can I I uh, I'll probably go for a more upbeat style of dancing then. Cool. Are you going to do it solo or are you going to do it with Arissa and try and dance off while dancing with each other? The second option sounds fun if she's game. Yeah. <laughs> Arissa hoiks up her skirt. Bring it. All right, you two. Um, she, just, she whips off her, her lead skirt to reveal another shorter skirt. <laughs> <laughs> and jazz shoes. What? <laughs> she's got fucking tap dance. Tap dance. Are we going? Yes. <laughs> well, I mean, I could do that too, but I'm pretty sure I get thrown out. <laughs> you all thought I was wearing heels with the clicks I was making. Ha ha! <laughs> um, okay, so you guys, in contrast to the music that's currently playing behind you in the background, which I can't change right now, uh, you guys engage in a very lively dance. Um, you occasionally dancing together. <laughs> Clasping your hands, stepping forward, stepping back, twirling out, doing a dance against each other, and then coming back together and furiously stepping, glaring into each other's eyes, until finally Belgrath just stumbles over one tiny quick move at the end. He puts one toe out of line and Arissa crushes him and points her hand in the air in victory! The dance competition winner, Arissa, by a whisker. Aww. Well, twenty four to a twenty three, man. It was it was a close run thing. In my head, um, she's got he like fell and she caught him, and she's like, <laughs> with her other arm in the air and she like, down at him and goes, "No one out bards the bard." <laughs> Kiss me, you fool. <laughs> in or out of character, Pilgrim? Oh. I mean, kind of in character, but it's with a big mocking grin. <laughs> she just goes, you know, fucking what? All right, <laughs> it's a wedding. Yeah. <laughs> wait, what? Wait, wait, wait! <laughs> <laughs> the bard, after all, the bard's got a bard. All right, a Miss Arissa plants a smooch on you, Belgraf. What would you like to do? <laughs> I'll, I'll just go with it. Fuck it, why not? <laughs> and uh, let it be known, Arissa, that he kissed you because, mm, fuck it, why not? <laughs> <laughs> the phrase, what every girl wants to hear. And then she lets him drop. <laughs> oh, bitch. She just grins smugly and smiles. She's just like, eh, well... <laughs> Alrighty, so the rest of the wedding continues. Um, so, Kess, how exactly are you planning to look for these souls now? Right, uh, so it has to be the traditional way of um, looking for vulnerable drunk people. I missed the end of that sentence, but I'm going to assume it ends with to kill. Yeah, I, I mean. Yeah, eventually. I guess <laughs> it's going to be tricking people into leaving into a shady area and <laughs> yeah, then <laughs> killing and taking their soul in that order. <laughs> All right, Kess. Um, you wait for an opportune moment, and three moments arise. They all happen at a similar time when people are leaving the party. It's starting to get dark. Some of them are drunk. Some of them are just rowdy. Some of them are just not paying much attention. So you have three choices. They're all going to go in separate directions. You can go for... At the same time. Yeah. So the door comes open and there's a, gr oh. a, group, a group of people come out. You can go after 
one group, the other group, or the other group. So, one group can only be described as a group of Karens. They a are... what? Karens. Um, I will explain. Oh, fuck off, Karen. They're, yeah, exactly. They are uh, middle-aged gnome women who oh, seem okay. who have the I want to speak to the manager haircut. They also so they've got a short bob for anyone who doesn't know what that is. Um, it's a thing. It's real. I've worked in the service industry. It's real. Um, they've all got short bob, cropped hair, and they are chattering amongst themselves. And they're all saying things with a slightly drunk on wine esque mode of like, "Well, yes, but it would have been nice to have some salmon." And various things like that. And yes, yes, and of course, back in my day, we would have done it completely different. But of course, no service had to go and see it yourself and get your own food. Ah, dear me. So there's three of them. So there's three Karens. Mm-hmm. Okay, three Karens. There's three Karens. Um, there is five children who seem to be unaccompanied. Um, oh, who, uh, five, five children. And ch- children's souls are the same as adult souls, right? Yeah. Well, um, the souls are the same. You want to kill kids? That's fine. Um, there are so there's there's five there's five children who are all sort of fighting and arguing over these toys that they've got. Um, and they aren't paying attention. And they don't seem to be being watched. They come tearing out. They're all chasing each other. Um, so there's five of them. And the other group that you have is a group of gnome teenagers. Um, now there is four teenagers. And um, they've all got sort of long hair. And they're, they're like girls and guys. And they've all got sort of long hair. And they're wearing sort of boho chic clothes. And they're sort of floating along. They smell a little bit like strange herbs that are not medicinal. <laughs> And um, they seem a little out of it and they're floating around going like, yeah, cultural appropriation. Yeah, totally, yeah. And then this oh, okay. and that so, so, so and they, blah, they, blah, blah. See, so teenagers seems like they are already drugged. The teenagers are self-inflicted drugged. The Karens are wine drunk and the children are just bratty children. So, yeah, would you like to go after the four teenagers, the five children, or the three Karens? Choose your enemy! <laughs> I, I think teenager is the most appropriate here. You <laughs> chose teenagers! <laughs> All right. You know, but, but worst case scenario, if it fails, then everyone will just think that they were really stoned. <laughs> I love it. Did you bring your Did you bring your hunting sack? <laughs> did you bring your person sized sack? Yes. And um, okay, cool. So you uh, go to follow the teenagers. Oh, I'm not sure if I have a person. <laughs> um. So yeah, guess how would you like to do this? Um. You have got four slightly stoned teenagers waltzing about in front of you, <laughs> chatting about how. Um, well, really, like, I don't think they should have all been wearing white because that's just, like, you know, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, shit, shit, I haven't picked my spells properly yet for ninth level. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. But, I mean, I know I have Jason. Yeah. All right, what would you like to do? use Jen. Okay. I can just literally talk to them and try to persuade them to c- come with me because I have some very nice herbs that they could try. They are <laughs> even, uh, even even cooler than the herbs that they have. I, I would probably try to look like an actual teenager for this. <laughs> uh, just using uh, this guy's self as a teenager. Okay, and not, not not as a gnome teenager because I I don't I don't think I can be as small as a gnome, but a human teenager. Okay, you can be a human teenager. That's fine. Um, you can target one creature, and I will do their save. So, do you want to oh, go no, for? No, no, no. Oh, oh, oh no! I was not going to use suggestion. I was first trying to just use persuasion. Oh, okay. 
Even, it, it does even simpler. Yeah. Okay, because, cool. Yeah, that, that, that should be a lot simpler to do. There you go. Uh, if that fails, then I will use just... Okay. All right, so go for it. Do a persuasion check, guess. And what would well, you like? Is, at, at this stage, is it going to be deception or persuasion? Because, I mean, technically I'm per trying to persuade them, but I'm deceiving them about actually... I will let you choose whichever one you okay. are best at. Well, I'll, I will use deception then. Technically, <laughs> this is deception. It's a lie! It counts! Oh, okay. So my deception is 29 <laughs> oh so um what are you gonna say to these teenagers cats what are you going to entice them with okay okay uh, uh so uh stage I, I just wanted to copy in uh oh, okay yeah okay so nine ah oh, 29 29 not 1929. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, what would you like okay. to say? So I'm going to tell them that I have this amazing. I found this amazing herb garden in the in the nearby fields. Uh, it's a total secret there, and it has the best stuff I've ever tried. And I could show it to them, and we could have a party there together, and. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna lie to you. All that these guys heard was secret herb garden, drugs party. <laughs> they are in. They are so in. <laughs> okay. <laughs> They're like, yeah. Oh man, yeah, that'd be so totally tripping. Yeah, let's go. Yeah. I don't know why they're posh stone teenagers. It's happened now. It's it's. I'm going with it. They're <laughs> <laughs> stoned enough. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, let's do this. Uh, so okay, yeah, I guess, I guess take them out outside of the settlement. Okay, so you lead them sort of out of the city through the. You can, like, the city is built into the rock, so it's inside a mountain. So you could go to, like, one of the exit caves and you could go out of the cavern tunnels. Or you could go to the very outskirts of the city. Yeah. So if, if, if we go to the outskirts, uh, are we going to see guards or, or anyone? If you go to the main entrance, there's guards. If you go sort of round the edges there aren't guards around there because there aren't really walls to protect yeah. so you could go sort of towards i mean to be fair it's like the um what's the word i'm looking for more rural area that's the word so there's like um yeah. there is some grass and some trees uh that grow they're sort of like they're interesting plants they're not complete tree trees they're like indoor underground trees but there's like a whole section of that just round the outside Round the yeah, outside, okay. round the outside. So, so uh, I, I would, I would leave them, lead them to that sort of place, and um, so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use pest without the trace while we are going. Okay. Which, which I mean, so that adds to the stealth, and I, I don't really want to be tracked either. So. Okay. Because that you know, I, I don't really want people to notice what has been done here. <laughs> okay. All right, yeah, Cass. So, you know, I'm just hurting them away. <laughs> All right. Um, you're not really heading towards any part of the city where many people are. Most people are either guarding the gates on duty or they're up at the palace partying. So you don't really pass many people at all. Like the odd cat, but like. They don't really look at you too suspiciously. They just sort of carry on. Meow. Carry on about their day. Yeah, so. well, you know, they're just parking teenagers. But yeah. So, so I'm, I'm using Quest Without a Trace to not leave tracks and, and to to not uh, to try not to be noticed as well. And I'm, I'm trying to lead them to a nice, nice place that's completely deserted. There are no people at all. Should, should I roll, be rolling perception?
Okay. Hi. Uh, I, 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 so last bit again, Cass? Yeah, so I, I was saying, uh, I'm trying to, to take them to a completely deserted place without any people. Yeah. Should I be rolling perception to find, to, to make sure that there's no one around? I mean, and, and you, I, I, you yeah. can do, you can do a perception check, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. So that's an 18 perception. Cool. And, and I'm trying to take them to, to a place that's relatively confined, so they can't run away to you see a few slugs. You don't see anyone else. Um, you take them, you go round, like, right against the rocky wall of the outskirts of the city. There's, like, um, essentially yeah. this rural garden area, and it's quite dark. There's no there's no real lights here. There are lanterns that you could light, but you, you can choose not to as you pass. So it gets quite dark towards the outskirts, and you can just sort of see the lights of the palace in the far distance. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, and we are out of earshots as well of people, so as far as I'm... Yeah, as far aware. as you can tell, there isn't anyone within earshot. Okay. Um... Right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um how how do you wanna do this, guess? How would you like to um murderize these stoners? <laughs> if you yeah. if if you want to yeah. think about it, we could finish because we're gonna end in like five minutes. If you want to think yeah. about it, you can think about it. I, 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 I was thinking of uh using vampiric because uh, it's 3d6 necrotic damage cool and I, I guess it, that, that just makes them feel uh tired so, so i guess if i'm going with my deception i could play it in a way that i try to trick them that they think they are just having these nice herbs while i'm using necrotic touch on them because i yeah. can use it up to a minute and I mean, it, it it will hurt them, but I guess it won't be. I, I don't know how obvious it will be <laughs> if, I, if I'm trying to trick them to say, "Oh yeah, it's just the herb, herbs have a weird effect." Yeah. Stuff. Do do a deception check to convince okay, them. Yeah, an, 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 another one, a new one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Although to oh. to be fair. I might give you advantage because the last one was so good. Like, they are fully on board right now. Yeah, okay. Shit, okay. Uh, so that's not going to be as good. It's like 21. <laughs> You're still alright. They are... They're like, yeah, man, yeah, whatever, yeah, new experiences. Yeah, it's okay, we can ride the wave, it'll be fine. Intense, I love it, yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah. So I'll, I'll be feeding them these. So I, I guess I will be just picking up random. You can pick. You can pick up rocks like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Blades of grass. Yeah. Whatever you hand to them, they're just like, yeah, yeah. They're quite pretentious. They're like, mm, yeah, I'm sure I've had this before. Yeah. And, yeah. and I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell them that oh, they're just going to have a nice sleep and amazing dreams from this. Mm, yeah. Should we, like, lie down or something? Yeah, that, that will make it more comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cool. Let's, let's. We should have, like, a drum circle later. That'll be intense. So, yeah, they all lie down. Oh. Wow, I feel terrible out of character. <laughs> 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 yeah, guess it's trying to... It's okay. Society will not miss them. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> So no teenagers. Okay. Uh, yeah. So I, I think I described what I want to do is is basically trick them into thinking they are taking drugs. Cool. Whereas I'm using a uh, vampiric touch to actually go for it. And you are you yeah. and you're gonna do a touch on each of them? Yeah. Uh, cool. So it does three d six necrotic damage. 
Okay, cool. So um, I'll let you roll it. Actually roll. Um, yeah, so roll it. If you want, you can just roll it once, and that'll be the same for each of them. Or if you want, you can roll four times. Hey, Belgrath! <laughs> <laughs> Are you uncomfortable? <laughs> He's pulling uncomfortable faces in the chat. <laughs> this isn't horrifying at all. <laughs> so, so, uh, that's ten points of damage. Okay, cool. Um, the necrotic damage, as it hits each of them, seems to have a really odd effect based on whatever it is they've already just taken this evening, um, and it makes them all go dead silent. Like, their mouths are moving and their eyes are really wide and they're all staring up at the cavern ceiling, but they're, like, they're like flapping like silent fish, like... <coughs> Making this better. <laughs> <Yeah, damn. laughs> okay. <laughs> so, so if they're not dead yet, then uh, Cass will go for another, another touch as well. Uh, another vampire touch because it, it should be on for a minute. Yeah, it'll keep it'll keep going. So do you want to roll another one? Yeah, I will roll again. Just gonna look. Oh, up. why am I rolling this low? <laughs> Another ten. Another ten. Okay, cool. Average number of hit points for gnome teenagers. Yeah, they're dead. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, mm -hmm. on your on your second go around, um, the flapping fishes go limp. And sort of lie there in the grass with the eyes staring up at you wide, but blank and empty. And you can sense the souls starting to move out of the bodies. Right, okay. So if this will take souls. Okay. And you're going to take all four souls. Yeah. Okay, which brings your total up to... 83? 83, okay. Yeah. Oh, I, th I think th this was quite uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> um, on that happy note, um, yeah, on, uh, yeah, on that happy note. So we're going to cut back to the wedding. Um, <laughs> everyone smashed. They're having a great time. There's confetti everywhere. There's uh, <laughs> there's confetti everywhere. Everyone's slipping in the confetti and having a great time. They've brought out the bubble machine. It's amazing. All the little gnome kids are bouncing up and down trying to catch the bubbles. Those five kids who ran outside earlier, they did a lap, a whole lap of the cathedral and then came running back inside waving the toy. The Karens have gone walking down the street getting wine drunk they've smoked a cigarette and they've come back inside and they're all talking about how they would have waiters to serve us at the table because it was just ridiculous to expect people to get their own wine and it's all brilliant and hilarious and lovely and that is where we shall leave it for this evening because we do not end on a downer <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, the contrast is quite good between the two. <laughs> it's just like, if this was a TV show, oh my god, it would be like, on the one hand, you'd be laughing and then suddenly, oh, oh my god, what did I just watch? Oh, I'm laughing again. Oh, this is great, this is funny, I'm forgetting everything I just saw. It's fine, this is fine, we're all fine here. Fine, how are you? Mm -hmm. Great, yeah. <laughs> Um, so if I can get a very cheerful goodbye to the recording from everybody. <laughs> the dirty bear. The dirty bear. <laughs> <laughs>